Let us talk about the most common causes of dizziness and vertigo, how to detect them and how to treat them. Dizziness is the sensation of lightheadedness, fainting and feeling unsteady. Vertigo, on the other hand, is a specific type of dizziness where a person experiences a strong illusion of spinning or rotation, even when they are still. For example, think back to childhood. Everyone, at least once, has spun around in circles. And when you stop, that sensation of the room continuing to spin around you, that is vertigo. Now, the most common cause of dizziness and vertigo is benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. It is responsible for around 30% of all cases of vertigo. Imagine a 60-year-old person who experiences brief episodes of spinning sensations when they turn over in bed or look up. This happens because tiny calcium particles in the inner ear become displaced and travel to different areas of the cipular system, irritating the balance centers. While this condition usually affects people over 50 years old, it can strike at any age. The good news is that the treatment is straightforward. The Epley maneuver and vestibular rehabilitation exercises often bring significant relief. The prognosis is excellent and most patients experience major improvements after treatment. The second most common cause of dizziness is dehydration, which is responsible for almost 20% of cases. Picture this. A person stands up and says, I feel dizzy, especially when I stand up, and I have not been drinking much water today. This dizziness occurs due to a lack of fluids, leading to reduced blood volume, which in turn causes a drop in blood pressure. It is particularly common among people over 65 years of age and in patients taking antihypertensive medications. Increasing fluid and salt intake is effective in most cases, and adjusting medications if necessary also helps. The prognosis is good in most instances. The third most common scenario is orthostatic hypotension. This condition occurs when a person gets up quickly from sitting or lying down and suddenly feels lightheaded or might even faint. A sudden drop in blood pressure when standing causes reduced blood flow to the brain. It is more common in the elderly, particularly after prolonged periods of sitting or bed rest or due to the intake of medications. Treatment involves increasing fluid and salt intake, wearing compression stockings to improve venous return, and in some cases taking food cortisone to increase blood volume. Avoiding sudden standing, especially after lying down, is important. Additionally, small frequent meals can help prevent postprandial hypotension, and techniques like leg crossing or squatting before standing can improve venous return before standing up. Dizziness is also common in people taking multiple medications. Often it occurs due to interactions between medications. The fourth most common cause of dizziness is anxiety and panic attacks. Imagine a person saying, I feel like the room is spinning and my heart races when I am stressed or anxious. This happens due to hyperventilation, where a person breathes rapidly. This fast breathing leads to low carbon dioxide levels in the blood, causing respiratory or colossus. As a result, the blood vessels in the brain constrict, making the dizziness even worse, but there is more. The adrenaline surge during a panic attack alters blood flow heightening the dizzy sensation. This cause is more common among young people, especially females. Treatment includes cognitive behavioral therapy, which can work wonders for many. But if therapy alone is not enough, anxiolytic medications like serotonin selective reuptake inhibitors or benzodiazepines may be necessary. Stress management techniques such as meditation and yoga are also powerful tools. With the right treatment, the prognosis is good. Another common reason a person might feel dizzy is low blood glucose levels. This condition is more common in people with diabetes, particularly those on insulin therapy, sulfonylureas or other anti-diabetic medications. It can also happen when a person has fasted or followed an inappropriate diet. Picture this. A person says, I feel shaky, weak and dizzy, especially when I have not eaten for a while. Low blood sugar deprives the brain of glucose, causing weakness and dizziness. The sixth most common cause of dizziness is anemia. This is more frequent among women during their reproductive years, affecting nearly 20% of reproductive age women, 
as well as elderly individuals over 65. Iron deficiency anemia is the most common type and the usual treatment involves iron supplementation or addressing the cause of bleeding. Though it is more common in adults, it can affect anyone. And the seventh most common cause, it is vasovagal syncope. This happens when the body overreacts to certain stressors. It is triggered by the vagus nerve, leading to a sudden drop in heart rate and blood pressure. This reaction can occur in situations like prolonged standing, heat exposure, emotional stress, anxiety, pain, and even straining during urination or bowel movements. Can you picture it? A teenager faints after standing in a hot room for an extended time during a school assembly. When vasovagal syncope symptoms appear, the treatment is simple but effective. Leg crossing and muscle tensing maneuvers. While standing, cross your legs firmly and squeeze your thighs together. At the same time, tense the muscles in your legs. These actions help increase venous return and prevent fainting. Other less common but possible causes of dizziness include Meniere's disease. This condition presents with episodes of vertigo that can last anywhere from 20 minutes to several hours. It is often accompanied by fluctuating hearing loss, a ringing in the ear, and a feeling of fullness or pressure in the affected ear. While many as disease can occur without hearing loss, it is usually linked to hearing problems. This disease has a strong genetic association and is also linked to autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis as well as viral infections, allergies and migraines. The core idea behind this disease is an endolymphatic fluid buildup in the inner ear, specifically in the endolymphatic sac. This increased pressure affects both the vestibular structures responsible for balance and the cochlear structures responsible for hearing. Treatment often involves a low sodium diet, diuretics to decrease the endolymphatic buildup, and vestibular suppressants like meclizine. In severe cases, corticosteroids or surgical decompression may be necessary. In treating panic injections of gentamicin for vestibular ablation or steroids can help when vertigo persists. Migrainous vertigo. This occurs when vertigo is associated with headaches, light and sound sensitivity and visual disturbances. If a person experiences vertigo episodes accompanied by visual disturbances, also known as auras, it is more likely to be related to migraines. Multiple sclerosis. This autoimmune condition can also cause vertigo, especially when it appears alongside other neurological symptoms such as double vision, muscle weakness, numbness and balance problems. Vertigo in this condition can come and go. Multiple sclerosis is more common in women and tends to affect those in northern populations, typically between the ages of 20 and 40. It is also highly associated with vitamin D deficiencies. Multiple sclerosis occurs when the immune system attacks the myelin sheath, which surrounds the nerve fibers in the central nervous system, a process known as demyelination. Early diagnosis and treatment are critical in managing this disease. Arrhythmias. When arrhythmias lead to insufficient blood flow to the brain, dizziness can result. If the heart beats too fast or too slow, it disrupts the efficient supply of oxygen to the brain, causing dizziness and lightheadedness. In such cases, a person might also feel irregular or fast heartbeats, along with fatigue, tiredness and shortness of breath. Atrial fibrillation is the most common arrhythmia linked to dizziness, though other types such as ventricular tachycardia and bradycardia can also cause these symptoms. An ECG is the main diagnostic tool for detecting arrhythmias and a halter monitor can be used to track arrhythmias over a period of 24 to 48 hours when they are irregular. Beta blockers are often one of the first line treatments, particularly for atrial fibrillation, as they help slow down the heart rate. Other antiarrhythmic drugs like amiodarone and flicanide may also be used. 